Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be learning about container security. Within this topic, the, we will start with container registry as we started doing the lab and other things on container registry. We'll start with uh, container registry security specific. To begin with that, uh, it's always recommended to use private registry. The reason being uh, the containers are built from images that are stored in one or more repositories, right? If these repositories are belonging to public registry like Docker Hub or any of the private registry, an example of private registry is the Docker Trusted Registry, which can be installed on premises on uh, your own virtual lab or virtual private cloud altogether and you can use those um, cloud-based private container registries including Azure or container registry services. A publicly available container images does not guarantee the complete security for you and the container images uh, consist of multiple software layers and each software layer might have uh, maybe a vulnerabilities within that to help reduce these kind of you know, threat of attacks, you should store and retrieve images from a private registry such as Azure Container Registry instead of you go uh, go for a public repository or better way you do you know go for the uh, a Docker Trusted Registry and you can pull from there. In addition to providing and managing a private registry, Azure Container Registry supports um, SPN method, so service principle uh, based authentication that would actually secures uh, complete authentication and it makes as a backend to use as your active directory for basic authentication flows this authentication includes your or back and other uh, other access for the pull or push which is used for the writing and other permissions other permissions purpose and uh, coming back to the monitoring and the scanning containers images it's always uh, recommended you to uh, use the private registry and identify any kind of you know potentially vulnerabilities it's most important uh, to understand the depth of the threat uh, detection that uh, different solutions which are provided if you are interested you should be actually looking into the marketplace for two different uh, service providers or applications uh, which are completely gives the solution for end-to-end -end, including the DevOps as well as the container security from the twist log and aqua security these are the two different uh, vendors who are or the solutions which are available within Microsoft marketplace which is Azure marketplace in this case and uh, you need to be you know, protected your uh, credentials in order to secure in, in a different way for example uh, if you're trying to use any of the protected uh, credentials you must have to encrypt them in a such a way to you know use the either as your key vault and store the, all the um, your secrets and the user ID store it in inside the Azure key vault and also try to apply wherever it is possible all the required role-based access control for your containers and permit only the approved registries ensure that the integrity of the images uh, throughout your life cycle for example you must have to check for the images with the vulnerabilities then move for uh, monitoring and should not be allowed to run a production environment ideally these kind of things uh, will follow your own process creation and you should be able to do that and enforce least privileges uh, within your runtime so that the basic security best practices you would be applying on your containers. So when a vulnerability is exposed, um, it generally gives the attacker access uh, with the privileges equal to those the compromised uh, applications or the process ensuring that uh, containers operate with the lowest privileges and access required to get your jobs to be done um, so that you are reducing your exposure to the risk. You can use the monitoring options uh, such as the Azure monitoring for containers and also use the other container monitoring solutions so that you can actually check the entire uh, flow by integrating your metrics within your API dashboard of your Azure monitoring and uh, once you are 
completely monitoring your containers and their activities including the user access what kind of activities they are performing and that actually makes uh, easy for us uh, to understand what's going on within our uh, dockers or within our container registries and also you can monitor container resource activity and log all possible uh, container administrative user access for your auditing purpose that uh, concludes about the container registry uh, at the high level of security consideration topic and we'll move to the next uh, one which is a container instance so I have listed here a lot of other points which are best practices that must to be followed as a baseline for your container instances uh, starting with the network security when we talk about the network security, it comes uh, starting from your uh, firewalls and NSGs uh, that all comes into this. So as your virtual network provides uh, secure and private networking for your Azure as well as the on-premises resources. So when you're integrating your container groups uh, in Azure container instances within the virtual network, you should be able to protect them with the possible uh, scenarios within the deploying instances. Uh, with the proper NSGs and creating of those rules and the required firewall um, applica uh, firewalls to be enabled for example not just the Azure firewall you can also use IDS and IPS specific uh, third-party specific applications uh, which uh, provides the IDS and IPS specific filtering also within the with the help of Azure firewall and also you can use um, threat intelligent within the Azure firewall that would actually helps you and also you can use the uh, Azure web Web application firewall which will be your front uh, front end for the critical web applications hosted within your container instances for additional inspection of incoming traffic which is uh, coming for you so that you can enable the diagnostic settings within the uh, web application firewall and uh, check the logs of uh, which the log should be stored maybe in your storage account even hub or log analytics services so so that you get more inside of what's going on for your applications and also if it is uh, if it is any kind of you know you have an option go for dna communication with known malicious ip addresses so that you are uh, configuring your enabling DDoS protection with the standard uh, protective uh, or protection from the Azure virtual networks to guard your uh, guard uh, against DDoS attacks. So that way, Azure um, offers you a secure uh, center integrated a threat analysis to deny communications with known malicious IP addresses and also you best to record your network packets and uh, and as well as the flows with the help of the NSGs uh, with your virtual network implementation enable NSG flow log for your NSG attached to the subnets that are delegated with your Azure containers when you configure for your Azure instances uh, for your uh, containers uh, like the application gateway that will ensure uh, for your web applications with uh, HTTPS or SSL enabled for trust trusted certificates and um, that should be one of the uh, best practices that you can enable for Azure application gateway use the network standards uh, for example uh, use the Azure policies and uh, create your Azure blueprints and you can configure your Azure uh, best practices for your networking so that you would always go for that specific uh, best practices and you will not be deviate from your actual process and document uh, the complete traffic configuration rules that you are creating within your uh, docker specific environment and also log all possible information um, for example when we talk about the logging it can be uh, for the security logs or the you can enable even auditing log for as your resources and you can collect the security logs for operating system configure uh, security logs for your storage uh, for retention purpose and these kind of you know, logs will uh, can be integrated again with the uh, 
Azure monitoring and log analytics services that we you can uh, get more insights for example if you see here you can uh, we, we talked about the only auditing log and other information but if you see application system security storage logs even monitoring reviewing those logs time to time basis and all these logs should be centralized with the uh, anti malware logging information so whatever the anti malware which is running on your uh, on on top of your dockers and other things that also should be logged in in a central place also enable azure dns specific query logging and command line auditing so that you know that you know which user is performing what kind of actions and that would be completely logged in as a history so that you are protecting your containers and use the most powerful tool as your ad uh, and within the Azure AD, you can go for the single sign-on for your container instances and use multi-factor authentication wherever it is possible and use also the dedicated machines for the uh, for the privileged uh, access workstations so that um, you would be securing in other way just the granting for those machines and also we talked about we also have another points like approved location so that the complete content will be uh, accessed from those specific locations those instances will be always accessed for that specific location and also alert uh, an act account lock on behavior deviations let's say uh, if you have the p2 license and if a user is a phone as a risky it will be logged and it will be alerted for you and so that you are um, securing your containers or the user account so it can block it can disable based on based on the access rules and also protect your data protected um, use for the data protection policies and uh, maintain an inventory of sensitive information isolate system storing and uh, processing sensitive information and monitor and block unauthorized uh, transfer of sensitive information with the help of nsgs and the rules uh, that can be created and also encrypt all sensitive information with your private keys uh, encryption keys and use the uh, use as your key vault services wherever it is possible and the most uh, useful one would be the or bag so go for the least configuration least access con uh, configuration policies for your as your resources especially for the containers in this case and these are most of the time these are the best practices even apply for other as your resources also or other as your services and run automated vulnerability scanning tools uh, so that you know uh, what kind of uh, vulnerabilities available in a time to time like let's see 90 days every 90 days you can run these kind of you know automated and discover any of the vulnerabilities which are uh, found and also use the patch management from the Microsoft uh, for the operating system as well as for the third-party uh, softwares you can go for the third-party patch management solutions which are available within the marketplace and compare back to back vulnerability scans like let's say you scan for the 90 days time or 60 days time as per your process and uh, go back to the back uh, back vulnerability scan report and current scan report and compare both of both them both of them and if found any of the deviations try to you know fix them and physically and logically segregate high risk applications so that um, you are actually uh, if a compromising happen it would only leads to a specific isolated area so that's where uh, you try to you know isolate your physical and logical segregation high-risk application and also do the penetration test and uh, use the red team exercises that are a Microsoft recommendation uh, where you would be performing your own application specific penetration test to uh, engage uh, Microsoft rules of engagement to ensure your pen, uh, penetration testing are not in violation of Microsoft policies and Microsoft strategy and execution of red teaming and live site penetration testing against Microsoft managed cloud infrastructure services and applications can be uh, do or can go for this kind of you know testing I hope uh, these are the some of the best uh, practices which needs to be followed uh, in order to securing container so I just I just wanted to go to the uh, portal before we wind up and I wanted to show you uh, what 
what are the things uh, or where are the things which you can secure at the exam point of view so these are all the most of the frequent questions which um, you might get it in your exam for AC 500 or any of the exam for the security so if you see here this is a container service and this container service can be protected with the identity and um, when we talk about identity as your identity access can be enabled and these uh, keys are uh, retrieved from the Azure Key Vault services. So in the in the backend, it actually creates even the service principle also. So uh, you can grant the access for the required uh, permissions from the role-based access management also. So you can also, the next one would be the, you can grant the uh, role-based access uh, from the AMP security. And coming back to the encryption, use your own encryption. Uh, keys also so that you are protecting your containers uh, registry services uh, with your own key which can be decrypted and uh, which is useful for you and uh, coming back to the uh, networking try to go for the uh, premium so that or the standard at least so that you have the more options like you can use the uh, firewall concept here where you can you know upgrade this to premium and uh, and you can apply the azure firewall settings and you can uh, configure in a such a way to just to uh, allow a specific uh, network which is available f or which is open for example if you see here you can configure based on the IPs and you can assess with this IP traffic internal and outgoing inbound outbound traffic with the Azure firewall concept and uh, also you can configure your uh, access range all that kind of you know uh, advanced topics can be used for the networking specific if you go for the premium service or oh, and also the private endpoints also can be done um, with this you can uh, submit your uh, private endpoint so that you it will be only accessible from that specific uh, endpoint locations and coming back to logs which is a uh, very default here and uh, which is very common you can protect your uh, container registry not to delete by securing by locking your as your resources by using the add button here not delete or delete if you have not gone through the, these uh, specific lecture on the resource logs uh, you can check out that but it's a general concept that can be applied here and coming back to the repositories always use the latest repository and latest version latest tag so that um, you would be uh, you would be on up to date of the image which is available in your uh, container registry and that's all about the container registry if I just go back to the uh, container instance again it's almost the same like uh, AM which is a role based access management you can grant here the access for the uh, starting from the least to higher privileged uh, people um, or higher access permissions you can grant it and coming back to the identity it remains the same as the instance where you can enable for the system assigned or the user assigned and coming back to uh, logs it remains same and uh, you can always monitor uh, what's going on on your uh, metric specific and you can uh, check out what's going on within this image and I hope these are the uh, best practices which I can share with you at this point of time. Uh, I hope this is useful for you. Thank you for watching this. We'll catch you in the next lecture.